Hey everybody, welcome to a unique unboxing. And why is it unique? Well, because these are going to be separate clips edited together. Originally, I had planned for this to be two unboxings together, and then the bigger unboxing that I have coming. The two of them were supposed to arrive, uh, one was supposed to arrive today, one was supposed to arrive last week. Well, the one that will arrive last week, there's no date on it now. It's on its way to me, but it's kind of lost. So, I have one part, I have one part here, here, there we go. I have one part here, uh, whenever the next one comes, I'll do an unboxing of that. And what this should lead up to is that there will be two little ones and two big ones. So, whether or not, I don't know when either big one will get here, but I'm waiting to do the big one. So this might be a long video, it may not, I'm not sure. So bear with me and keep in mind if I wear different shirts, it's because it's different clips. Um, due to the fact that not everything came by the time it was supposed to. So, let's see what's in here, shall we? So, this isn't really an unboxing as much as it's an unpacking. Alright. It is okay. So, this is one item. And it is... The Steelbook version of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. So you can probably figure out, with Bill and Ted Face the Music coming out, the other one is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure Steelbook. I was supposed to have both of these, and again, they were supposed to have been delivered one today, one last week. The first one has not yet been delivered. Um, I really like this Steelbook. I have the collection. But when the Steelbooks came out, I wanted to go with the Steelbooks because I thought the Steelbooks looked a lot better. And if you just take away Bogus Journey uh, like that, I don't know how well you can see it. It looks like a phone box, and it looks like it's just going to be uh, Doctor Who related. So I'm going to open this sucker, and we will see if there's anything inside of it. This is what the inside looks like. You have a fun little picture with Beth. So, yeah, I highly enjoy the Steelbook. The only thing I don't like about Steelbooks is that this special feature tab right here is very flimsy and it comes off. So you go, hey, I want to pick out a Steelbook. You pull this from the shelf, you don't know what features are on it. And because there's no insert, you don't know what features are on it until you put it in. Alright, continuing with the unboxing, we have this, this package. I know exactly what it is, and there's a story behind it. So, yep, here it is, the steelbook of Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, just in time for Bill and Ted Face the Music that comes out at the end of this month, if you are watching this in the month of August. If you are not, Bill and Ted's already out, and I've probably already seen it, and there's probably already a review. But, since I'm filming this as right now, which is around August 6th, so this is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. This is the Steelbook. There's an audio commentary and a, or audio commentaries and documentary, and a documentary on here. The interesting part is that the documentary appeared on the bonus disc of the uh, Bill and Ted Excellent Collection that had both movies. There was Excellent Adventure, Bogus Journey, and then there was a bonus disc full of interviews and stuff like that. For whatever reason, they don't port anything other than the making of. And I honestly don't know many people that would double dip and have the collection and the steelbook. It, uh, and they've lately, Shout Factory has started to do this way more lately of, hey, we're going to put out a steelbook after this set. Um, and the steelbook has a new transfer. Here's the inside of the steelbook. So the funny story is that this, this went on a bogus journey. I know it's excellent adventure, but it had a bogus journey. So I have a, an app or a 
program, whatever you want to call it, it's called informed delivery. You can see where your mail goes. So, I was looking at it, and this arrived and left St. Louis five times. I have no idea why or how. I'm surprised it got to me today, to be honest with you. Um, while I'm thinking of it, there's still one more unboxing after the one I have here. There's still one more thing I'm going to unbox. That should be here Monday. Uh, it is a Wednesday... It's a Thursday when I'm filming this, so that should be here Monday, hopefully, hoping it gets here earlier. But, anyway, this is Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, the Steelbook 30th Anniversary Edition to go with Bogus Journey. So, next up, we have Order... I, I know what this is. This is Order Number 2 from Kino. I do not know what order it's in, and I do remember what I ordered, so whatever I pull out... Y'all don't want to see that. So, first thing I have... All right. Bad Manners with Martin Mull and Karen Black. This is a brand new 2019 transfer. And I liked... I have seen stuff from this movie. I really like Martin Mull. Really like Karen Black. But I don't think it shows the character. Um, a woman that I believe she was the secretary in Twin Peaks. She was also in Last American Virgin. She is in this movie, Bad Manners. So, it had a different... A different name too and I can't remember what it is but Bleeding Heart Orphanage these kids will steal your heart your wallet your tires your sanity so I'm excited to watch this one next up we have all right Tim Robbins Stephen Jeffries Amanda Bierce in Fraternity Vacation uh, this has a brand new 2019 transfer as well these must be Scorpion DVDs yes they are these are, or Blu-rays. These are done by Scorpion. They came in the Kino box, but these are both Scorpion releases. Um, the sad part about them is there's new masters, but it doesn't look like any special features other than the trailers. Okay, I think next up is a Kino order. Yep. This one is a Kino film. I am very excited for this. Uh, I don't know if you can read it. It is The Chant of Jimmy Blacksmith. Now... This was in, mentioned in Video Nasties, but this is also a Australian film about a Aborigin Aborigines? I, I don't know how to pronounce that. But basically, Jimmy Blacksmith is taken from his tribe and raised, according to this, raised in... Uh, in central New South Wales and is basically told to forget everything he knows about being a member of a tribe and is raised as basically a white person. Um, so, yeah. Interesting movie. Uh, Video Nasties, I can't remember if it's one or two, goes in in depth into this. Uh, Video Nasties 1 and 2 available at Severn.com. Link will be in the description. This has an international version, an interview with the director and the DP, um, an interview with the star, and then Disc 2 has the Australian version, an audio commentary, and an introduction, and there's a booklet. So this one will be covered at some point. I'm very interested in this. Which means the last one is, yep, this is... Moving Violations. And Moving Violations has John Murray and Jennifer Tilly. Um, this comes with an audio commentary and an original trailer, and that's about it. So, this says from the creators of Police Academy, which is why I got it. I'm calling this a comedy bundle for the most part. Bad Manners, Frat Vacation, and Moving Violations. All comedies. Uh, Bill and Ted's even a comedy. The chant of Jimmy Blacksmith is not. It is a hard drama and sometimes leans on horror. So that was it for this clip. One more clip coming through where I will say I'm continuing the unboxing because that'll be that'll be a big one because that's the halfway to to Black Friday. Well, the halfway to Black Friday sale. Everybody, welcome back to the final part of the unboxing. This is finally here. I've been waiting for quite a while for this. So, 
let's go through this and see what it is together. And while I'm thinking about it, if I look like a drowned rat or I'm out of breath, I went to grab the mail and when I did, it started pouring. So, here is the box. If you, as you can tell, packing peanuts. Ooh, boy. Oh, cool. Extended story numbers. Oh, shit. So, I got this lanyard. Uh, this is from the Severn sale, mid-year sale. So, this lanyard. And on the back, it says, write down your next ten six-digit order numbers with a minimum of ten dollars is enough. And when the card is filled up, email orders at Severn Films to have your orders verified. And you can redeem a free single Blu-ray or DVD of your choice. Very cool. So, what do we have first? First, a peanut went somewhere. First, right on top, we have Jess Franco's Baja, Baja? Bahia, Bahia Blanca. Jess Franco, one of my favorite directors. I own almost, I don't want to say all his back catalog, but I own a lot of his back catalog on Blu-ray. Now the sun's coming out and everything's fine. That's weird. Um, Lena Rome, Lena, Lena, Linnea, Rome is in this, who's in a lot of his stuff. Now, I got this because there's a special feature on a Night of Open Sex, and there's one other one I can't remember the name of, that's called In the Land of Franco. Well, this has part four of In the Land of Franco, and part three is on another one. Uh, there are now four parts. I don't know whether there's five and six. There's also an interview with Stephen Thrower, who does in the Landis Franco. Um, there's also, this is scanned in 4K from the original. So that's very cool. Next up in this box of, box of stuff, which kind of smells like pizza, Blackenstein on Blu-ray. Now, I had the DVD of this, but I've always wanted to upgrade. So their mid-year sale, I did just that. This has both the theatrical release and the video release version. An interview with a writer-director. An, archival, ar an archival news broadcast. Um, producers, directors, actors remember the uh, remember writer, the writer-producer. Um, an interview with creature designer and a theatrical trailer. So once again, that is Blackenstein. Next up, we have one movie that I've owned. I think it was on DVD. I don't remember once before. Drive-In Massacre. I loved it. The ending uh, was okay. But you know what? I like this movie well enough. Uh, planning on doing a review of it. Oh, special features. An audio commentary with the director. An interview with the star. Uh, Norm Sheridan recalls Drive-In Massacre. And... An interview with the director, a theatrical trailer is included. Let's see. Oh, next up. Oh boy, this is one I've, I've been excited for. This is Patrick on Blu-ray. Uh, this comes with an audio commentary, a segment from Not Quite Hollywood, and a vintage TV interview. Patrick was remade recently as, like, Patrick Awakens or something like that. However, this is an Australian film. Patrick himself is comatose and it is a horror movie and like this says the original comatose killer classic is back so he is a comatose killer you want to know how why that is well pick up this movie from Severn to find out oh boy next up we have the wild wild world of Jane Mansfield this is not narrated by Jane Mansfield uh, this is a something weird video thing. Uh, the special features, an SD video, SD, standard definition video master of the feature. The Devil and Jane, an interview with uh, Anton, oh, an interview with Anton LaVey biographer. That's interesting. There's a trailer. And also included is Wild, Weird, Wonderful Italians, a 1966 Italian Mondo film from the Something Weird archives. 
Now, I had caught some of this on TV when Something Weird had their own channel on, I want to say, Comcast. And so this is just Jane Mansfield going around various places. Uh, she tours her mansion with Mickey Hargitay. And yes, Hargitay, if that name sounds familiar, that is the last name of their daughter. Yes, Mickey Hargitay, Jane Mansfield had a daughter, Mariska Hargitay. Mariska Hargitay is on Law & Order SVU as Olivia Benson. So, there you go. So, next up we have... And now, the screaming starts. With Peter, uh, Peter Cushnine, Stephanie Beecham, Herbert Lom, Patrick McGee, and Ian Ogilvie. And now the screaming starts as an amicus picture. This has the haunting of Oakley Court. Uh, the author of Amicus, The Friendly Face of Fear, and David Flint, author of Ten Years of Terror, visit the horror film location. There's an audio, two audio commentaries, an archival audio interview, and a horror journalist recalls the movie, theatrical, uh, theatrical trailers, and radio spots. Keeping with the Amicus, we now have Asylum. This has uh, a 1972 on set report. David J. Shaw on Robert Block. David J. Shaw, he he wrote a draft of Freddy vs. Jason, I believe. But at this point, I think even David DeNoyer wrote a draft of Freddy vs. Jason. Uh, Fiona Fiona Sabatsky remembers Milton Sabatsky. Inside the Fear Factory and audio commentaries. I've been told Amicus is a really good company, so I've been wanting to check these out. They were on sale during the sale, so picked them up. Robo War, an Italian feature. So, this is Bruno Mattai. This is a year before Shocking Dark. And co-writer Claudio Fergasso and Rosella Druidi, uh, they also did the movie Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, a.k.a. Night Killer, and Zombie 4. The trailer from this looked awesome. I wanted to pick it up when it came out. It was a little too expensive, so I decided to wait. Here is the uh, cover. Now, Severn's next sale, while I'm going through these, their next sale is probably going to be Black Friday. Ah, here is an uncut version. Ooh, and limited to 3,000 units. Bonus soundtrack. Werewolf in a Girl's German Dormitory. This is the Italian, the uncut Italian version that's on Blu-ray for the first time only. Uh, there's an interview. There's an interview with screenwriter Ernesto Gastaldi, an audio commentary, an Italian trailer, U.S. trailer, and a book. Ooh, a booklet reproduction of original photo comic. Uh, directions to be aware and directions to be a werewolf. So super excited for this. Oh boy, I see what this is. This is Killer Crocodile and Killer Crocodile 2. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to open this. Uh, oh! Limited edition bonus Blu-ray disc. Killer Crocodile 2. Documentary on special effects master Gianetto De Rossi. I'm going to open this to see if it tells me what the other features are. Because it does not say on this cover. On this slip cover. So, Killer Crocodile. What's on it? Well, Killer Crocodile has, in the jaws of the crocodile, an interview with Gianetto De Rossi, the fearless crocodile hunter, an interview with the actor, uh, Pietro Giannardi, of Crocodile's Men, interview with Richard Crenna, R Richard Anthony Crenna. Uh, Richard Crenna is the colonel in the Rambo films, and it crawls an interview with cinematographer, and a trailer has been included. Once again, I have the two-disc set of Killer Crocodile, with Killer Crocodile 2 included. I've been told this was a good film, so... Or these were good films, why I picked it up. Hold on a second, folks. I'm gonna... Open and drink my soda pop. That's good night. So next up, we have this very, very weird film called... V. It's either V or Vi. And it's based on a novella by Niccolo Gogol. And this was adapted by Mario Bava as Black Sunday. So what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to 
when I get to it, I'm going to review, I think I have Black Sunday. I'm going to review Black Sunday, and I'm going to review this right after, and it will compare and contrast it. So, V the Vampire, the special features, V the Vampire, an interview with Richard Stanley, From the Woods to the Cosmos, John Lehman Riley on the history of Soviet fantasy and sci-fi, and short silent films, uh, Satan Exultant, The Queen of Spades, and The Portrait. And I believe this is a Russian film. Yeah, in 19th century Russia, a seminary student is forced to spend three nights with the corpse of a beautiful young witch. So, cool. This is from 1967, so I have a lot of 60s films. 60s and 70s. Alright, next up. Ah, another Amicus film, I believe. The Beast Must Die. I'm, this one was a new master that they did. If you ordered uh, any of their bundles, you would get this free with it. So, I believe this is Amicus. Here is the new slip. Which, I, I actually, I do like the new slip. Here's the original cover. Let's see if this is Amicus. Yep, yep, okay. So this is the final horror film from Amicus, upgraded and uncut. There's an audio commentary, uh, an audio essay, audio interview, another audio interview, and three audio interviews, and original, the original theatrical trailer with optional commentary by Kim Newman and David Flint. Kim Newman? Okay, so Kim Newman, if that name rings a bell, Kim Newman is in a lot of documentaries about British horror. He's in Video Nasties. I, he makes an appearance on... Uh, shit, there was a documentary. Oh, uh, Trial. Trial, The Trial of Dracula. He makes lots of appearances. So, next up, we have Lucio Fulci's Demonia. Now, I'm having to start to unwrap these, and I apologize for that. Uh, Demonia, from what I understand, has never been released on Blu-ray before. Demonia is about, I believe, a nun that gets possessed. I am a huge Fulci fan, and me and a group of friends have agreed, well, I'm not going to be able to tell the special features because this thing's wedged. Oh, here we go, here we go. Okay. Special features. Holy Demons. Uh, an interview with Anton, with, uh, Uncredited co-writer. Uh, Fulci lives an interview with Fulci on the set of Demonia. Of Skulls and Bones, an interview with the camera operator. An audio commentary by Stephen Throat. Uh, so, Demonia, we were talking... Demonia, it's... Uh, scanned in 4K for the first time ever. It's Fulci's... Fulci's uh, foray into non-exploitation. So, Fulci... What I should mention is Fulci is a little... Uh, th this may be a hot take, may not. Me and my friends who play Friday the 13th, we were discussing how Lucio Fulci tells better stories than... Um, oh my god, I can't think of his name. He's an Italian director. What is his name? He did Suspirio. Argento. Uh, my friends and I were discussing how we think Lucio Fulci tells better stories than Dario Argento, but Dario Argento is more stylized. Because Argento tends to go toward style over substance, while Fulci, he was great on gore effects, but he had more interesting stories. So next up, another Lucio Fulci. This one also has a, a soundtrack on it. This is Lucio Fulci's Enigma. Now, ah, good grief. I do like the blue on this. Uh, here's what that looks like. There we go. Fucking hell. God damn. Okay. It's weird. Some of these have packing on the inside, some of them don't. So, this one is forced, first time in 4K in America, and it says Lucio Fulci's batshit fan favorite. So, there's an audio commentary by Troy Hayworth and Mondo Digital's Nathaniel Thompson, an interview with the screenwriter, uh, Italian Enigma, a praising late-day Fulci featurette, 
So this was his final horror hit of the 80s. Um, it combined elements of Carrie, Phenomena, and Suspiria. Phenomena being the Argento film. So this is Enigma. I am very excited to watch these. I'm going to probably have to do a Fulci, marath Fulci and Amicus marathon here before long. So, what... Oh, dear. Oh, Jesus. I forgot this came with it. So, I got the Hold the Beans, which is just the DVDs, Blu-rays, and stuff. And this is Frankie and His Pals on DVD, number 433 out of 1,000. This is directed by Gerald Cormier, who did Terror Circus, Terror Circus, a.k.a. Barn of the Naked Dead. This looks like it's shot on video, and it looks like it's a lot of fun and maybe a great, great slice of cheese. Here is Jess Franco's Shining Sex. Shining Sex probably has part three of the, uh, in the land of Franco. There's the cover. That is Lena Rome on the front. Or Lena. Oh, shit. I heard a pop. That can't be good. Damn, these are packed. There we go. Hopefully that one blur popped. Um, okay. So, in the land of, yep, in the land of Franco's part three, Stephen Thrower on this movie. Never met Franco. An interview with filmmaker and former post-production sound editor Gerard Kikione. Uh, Christopher Gan, filmmaker Christopher Gans on Franco, and a commentary with scholars Roberto Monel and Rod, Rod Barnett, and very not safe for work outtakes. That sounds interesting. Plus, this has a bonus CD. Uh, just Franco's sci-fi sex shocker restored and uncensored for the first time ever. So that'll be interesting to get to. I do have a Just Franco thing planned as well. Um, it's going to take me a bit, because I'm planning on going through Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th first, since I've already gone through a few of the Hellraisers. Uh, while I'm thinking of it, I can officially confirm Joe Bob Briggs has a cameo in, an, in my Nightmare on Elm Street rundown franchise. I just got, uh, got what I needed today from it. Oh, there is something big here, and I'm not sure what the heck it is. It may just be styrofoam. But I'm going to... Oh, okay. What is that? Okay, so that's all the movies. I don't know what's in here other than seven stickers. What is that? Oh, wait. I know what this is. Okay, yeah. This is a poster of the Severn Film Sale. That's really cool. So, that's what was in here. And then there are normal stickers, which I have a ton of. So, a root. Now, if you ordered from the Severn Mid-Year Sale like me, and you said, hey, I did not get Fulci for fake, you're not the only one. Nobody got Fulci for fake because they are waiting. Let me make sure. Yep, that's it. So nobody got Fulci for fake due to the fact they were still waiting on the slip covers. Once those slip covers get there, they will be sending them out. I'm not going to do that because you can see my address. So... So that was my mid-year bundle from Severn. That is the last of the, or mid-year sale from Severn. That is the last of the stuff I ordered. So that's probably going to be the last unboxing until around October when I have stuff from Fright Rags and I have my Friday the 13th box set getting here. So thank you for joining me on this unboxing journey. I apologize if this is extra long because... I was waiting on this one, and instead of releasing everything in short spurts, I wanted to release them all at once. So, thank you for watching. Uh, remember to stay spooky, stay scary, 
Take care. Cheers. I'll see you next time.